Sky Gray has been working in the field of experiential education for 34 years. And she has been a member of the Association for Experiential Education since 1984. Her roles within the association are too numerous to name, but suffice it to say that service is at the heart of everything she does. Skye is the former executive director of the Santa Fe Mountain Center and is currently steeped in child welfare reform efforts in Northern California at Valley of the Moon Children's Center, which serves as a shelter for abused, neglected, and abandoned babies, children, and youth. Please join me in welcoming Sky Gray. I have never been in a natural disaster. My story is going to tell you that I lived through a natural disaster. In the late hours of October 9th, 2017, there was a wicked wind that was whipping through Sonoma, Napa, Lake County, Mendocino counties. We were sitting outside enjoying, enjoying the evening like we often do, but something was different that night. And when we went to bed, Sarita, my family, my partner, when we went to bed that night, I said to myself and I said out loud, whatever that wind is, it is not good. And it wasn't. At 3.15 in the morning, I got a call about an evacuation. Sadita's best friend, mom, said to me in a rapid voice, there's a fire burning in your neighborhood and it's ripping through Sonoma County. You have 10 minutes to get out of your house. It's serious. So, sidebar, I've been steeped in a trauma-formed transformation at Valley of the Moon Children's Center, and I've been learning a lot about the central nervous system and how to regulate and how to work with fight, flight, and freeze, the F words, right? So I knew in that moment I could not go into freeze. I had to go into fight, and I had to go into flight, and I did. I walked down the stairs, and I thought to myself, how am I going to tell my 15-year-old daughter that you have 10 minutes to pack the things that are most precious to you? I breathed. I got in touch with the vagus nerve. If you don't know what that is, look it up, vagus nerve. And I breathed, and I walked into her room, and I told her that, and she did. And we were evacuated. She helped grab her things, the most precious things we could in our house, a baby book, pictures of my parents who are no longer here, love them, miss them always. And we did that as rapidly as we could. We got our German Shepherd L our corgi, Tina, our shipu, Tomas, and we got our bunnies, two bunnies, caramel popcorn and Cinnabon. <laughs> we got all of our animals and some of our precious things into the car. And as we were getting ready to drive away and the lights went out and the smoke was thick and I'm starting to really get into more of my panic mode because I've been breathing and breathing and breathing. Sadita looks at me with her big, beautiful eyes, and she says, Mom, what about Marcel? And I'm like, oh, what about Marcel? We can't forget Marcel. So she goes, can I go get him? I said, yes, go get Marcel. So as she was going to get Marcel, I ran, because everybody, there was nobody out in the streets. All the lights were off. I ran to our, my neighbor's house, and I knocked on the door, bam, bam, bam. And I thought, they're going to think I'm the crazy lady next door, right? Maybe, this, maybe I was overreacting. They came to the door. I said, there's a fire. They walked outside. There was like, oh my God, thank you so much. We're going to tell everybody in the neighborhood. And we were, I was doing the horn and 
Siddhartha came back with Marcel. And we left. And we were able to find a hotel, the last room, because 10,000s, thousands of people, 100,000 people at the end of that night were evacuated. I want to take a moment right now and I want you to join with me in a collective vibe and a collective thought that we send to California right now because the Tubbs fire was the most destructive fire in the history of California and beyond and the Camp Fire has now exceeded that. 157,000 people are evacuating from California right now in Butte County, down south in Ventura. They are in the same panic and total, utter disbelief that you can live through such an insane inferno, a wind-whipped inferno, and that's what it was, and that's what it is right now. So if you can think about the people who have lost their lives yesterday, the day before, more that will be found. Think about the natural disasters that continue to happen in Florida and beyond. It's sad, and people survive, and people get through it because of human spirit and human kindness. While we were fighting this and while I was evacuating, I was also on the phone. I had two cell phones going on because Valley of the Moon Children's Center was under siege. There were fires on three sides coming down, and we had 17 kids from four to 17 who had been removed from their homes and had only the things that they had when they were moved in Valley of the Moon Children's Center. So my director, who is the human services hero of Sonoma County, had to leave her home because of the fire. She went to her office and she mobilized evacuation. We were on the phone. We are like, finally, at 4 o'clock in the morning, Valley of the Moon was evacuated with 17 kids and five heroic staff who were able to keep their head together when fire was burning all around them. They are my heroes. Those kids are my heroes because they said over and over again, leaving Valley of the Moon means I've lost another home. The tears in my eyes, the tears in my heart, the heartbreak that we all shared was immense. And it was really interesting to have a professional and personal hat and this concept of split loyalties. When I was sworn in as a civil servant, here's what they told me, and I didn't think it was gonna ever happen really, but here's what they said in order to be sworn in as a civil servant. The person identified on the front of this card is an emergency worker for the county of Sonoma during times of disaster and local emergency. I was like, oh God, all right, this is getting real fast. <laughs> so we successfully evacuated everyone and I had to keep touching in with Sarita and Sarita, if you remember this moment when you were, you were having a really hard time about what, because I was on the phone and she could hear everything, USA Today, no, USA Today, USAA, insurance company, your, your house is in a line of fire and it's probably, you're not, it's probably not gonna be standing, we've got you. I'm like, oh, thanks, I appreciate that. Um, and, she, and she looked at me and I said, Sarita, if we lose our house and everything in it, we will be okay. We're alive, we got our animals, every stuff can be replaced. But that was really hard, I had to say that and I believe that, but it was our stuff, our memories. So back to trauma-informed care and the vagus nerve. So throughout this, as we were working with the kids, we made a makeshift shelter in where our social workers are. Um, we did a lot of 3-6 breathing. If you don't know about that, again, good stuff. We got the kids to settle down. We got them to be more in their center. We brought in as many experiential programs and fun stuff and movies and books. And, um, and one of the most amazing interventions that I have to share that wasn't in my speech, but now it's coming to me, um, is we had a young man, 16, uh, no, 13 years old, and he had been, has the most complex trauma history you could ever imagine. I won't even speak of it. It's that bad. So he is a hot mess. I'll talk about fire, more, fire metaphors in a minute. He was a hot mess, having a really hard time, dysregulated, suffering, and again, losing the very few things he had. So one of the section managers looked at him and said, as he was just kind of, kind of off the rails and said, do you want to go have sushi? He snapped out of it. He was like, sushi? Yeah. 
So the best intervention of that entire time, the four, five days before we got them all in homes, was the intervention with sushi. That's pretty cool, huh? So he was able to regulate, and he was able to come back, and we did an appreciation circle, and he got on a plane and he flew to a treatment center during while these wildfires were burning. It was a good story. Okay, so while things are marching on, the fire burned for 11 days. Above the center was a 747. They're flying right now in California, many of them, to try to save what they can. That's 150 feet over the campus of Valley of the Moon and the surrounding structures. And they came over and over and over, and they were able to hold the line from above and below. And that is a picture nearby where Valley of the Moon Children's Center is. That is a picture that's very close to where we live. They held the line. And because I had this badge, I was able to be myself, my section manager, and two other staff members were able to go behind the lines and actually see up close and personal firefighters, first responders, fighting, holding the line. Our center's literally right behind where those fire trucks are. And I was humbled to watch them. Some were sleeping under trees. They were exhausted. Some were actually the helicopters and everything. It was beautiful in this weird, smoky, stinky, awful way. But it was beautiful because they were fighting for us and for the kids and for all the people in the community. And they're doing that right now. Tens of thousands of firefighters are, are doing amazing work right now. Some were saved. Many, many, many animals, horses, dogs, cats, wildlife, the deer that you saw were, did not make it. Some were not. 44 people died, many driving through flames, many fleeing for their lives. And as the fire chief said in his most humble moment, our dispatchers stayed on the line until the lines went dead with people who couldn't get out. Our old neighborhood, I really wanted to buy this house. We were new to California, we were transplants, like, hey, we found this sweet spot, this beautiful Santa Rosa, California. That spot, that spot. Things didn't work out because we found this other house right down the hill, right down the hill from there, into this really beautiful green valley. We found our other house and we bought it and we moved. So I want you to think for a moment with me, a shift in the wind, aha. Have you ever had one? A shift in the wind, something just shifted and you saw things differently. You had a transformation moment. You went, oh my gosh, the humanity and the love that comes out of disaster is possible. And the shift of the wind ultimately sh saved our home and our neighborhood. Why did our neighborhood make it and that neighborhood didn't? I don't know, we'll never know. One house was up, the other house next, not so much, gone, incinerated in the most wicked wind, inferno, tsunami you could ever imagine and it's happening again. And my heart is breaking for those people because I've lived through a natural disaster. That is not far from our home. That is the shifting of the wind that we witness with our own eyes. That shift of the wind spared us, but it didn't spare everyone. And I am thankful, and we are blessed, Sarita. So not far in the Mayakamas Mountains, right below, uh, behind where the center is, this picture was taken, and that's a pine tree coming through the ashes next to that burnt pine cone. It is a symbol of hope. It is also an amazing representation and metaphor of through suffering and through hope, good things can happen. And even though the fire burned into the sewer systems and deep into the ground, uh, that pine tree made its way out. And we had the most beautiful wildfire, wildflower season that spring that you could ever imagine. They were brilliant because they, they grew through this ash and it has all sorts of nutrients. It's kind of interesting. Okay. 
as we were moving about town, our car was full of stuff, and we were able to move into a, to a better motel. We were evacuated for nine days, and for five days, we didn't know if our house was going to make it. These signs popped up everywhere. Love in the air is thicker than the smoke. In closing, my human services director, Karen Fees, gave these coins to us that commemorate the fires. There were seven of them burning at that time, seven different fires. There are 17 now. To commemorate and to thank us, we were first responders in many ways. And I've been, been given permission by Karen Fees to pass this coin, this commemorative moment, onto Sarita Joanne Gray. Come up, please. You see, Sarita? You see, when the fires were burning, there was a distribution center. Thank you. You're awesome. Um, there was a distribution center, and Sarita said, I cannot, I cannot stay in this hotel room the whole time. I've got to help. What can I do? What can I do? She went down, and people who had lost their homes and people who had nothing, she was organizing and giving out food, deodorant, everything anybody needed. She wanted to help, and she wanted to be of service. And I'll never forget that. And I was so proud of you, because you could have just crawled under the covers and said, oh, God, this is way too much for this 15-year-old head and heart. So on behalf of Sonoma County and Karen Fees, you get this beautiful coin. Thank you.